This right here is our most watched video of 2023. Information was great, honestly, the content sucked. It's only right that we do it again with Chris behind the lens a year later with another house. Let's go. Stop right there. If you are a builder, you're building a home, this is the video for you. Today, we're gonna give you a big tour of this home and we're gonna show you how to pre-wire a multi-million dollar home. Before we go inside, let's talk security. You can have the nicest house on the block, but if it's not secured, is it really the best house on the block? All right, let's talk security. The entire perimeter of this household has cat cable and all around it. There's two types of wires that you can run for cameras. One, cat cable that will give you an IP system and coaxial that will give you a digital system. Coax and Siamese old technology, if you're building a house in 2024, don't run those cables. Cat cabling is gonna give you the option to run an IP system that is gonna have more features, more capabilities, and overall better security experience. Let's talk security and alarm, come on. All right, let's talk alarm. You see this panel here? Honeywell security panel. All of the entry points are wired for security. You see a little contact up there. It's a magnet for the entry points. Security is key, so please don't skip out on that. Wireless does work, but if you can run some wireless line, it will be way better. Now that we've discussed security, one of the most important things in a house in 2024, it's Wi-Fi expansion. Without Wi-Fi and internet, I don't know, I guess nothing works, come on. When it comes to networking, we're gonna start in the office. A couple things that you'll notice is that we run cat cabling to all of the places where we feel that there's gonna be a product that needs to be hardwired into the system. We do have Wi-Fi access points throughout the house. We have it in the office, by the master bedroom, by the mudroom, and the central point upstairs. However, all of these will give the client the option to hardwire the equipment to make sure that we're not pulling off the Wi-Fi. When it comes to access points, boom, there's a blank plate up there where we're actually going to mount the hardwired access points. Whenever it comes to Wi-Fi expansion, you do not want to go wireless, you do not want to purchase extenders. In order to have a reliable system, you want to make sure that you hardwire through the access points inside of the house. All right, let's talk video. We have more cat cabling and coaxial. Things to consider when wiring for video. Who's gonna be your provider and what are you going to be watching? If you're going to be streaming, you want to make sure that you have cat cabling for ethernet so equipment is not running on the Wi-Fi. If you're going to be doing cable boxes, there's still a few cable boxes that use coaxial um, and antenna. If you wanna use an antenna, you're also going to need coaxial, but that's a cable that slowly has been fading out. You'll notice that a lot of our homes, unless it's requested by the client, will only run coaxial to dedicated rooms like the game room, the master bedroom, the living room, so the client can have a hardwired NVR cable box if they need it. Outside of that, we run cat cabling to make sure that everything is hardwired and we're not pulling off the Wi-Fi. Another thing that you'll notice is that we actually run multiple cat cables to the same TV location. Why? In a home like this where you're going to have video distribution, audio distribution, that cable is going to fulfill multiple purposes. One, data, obviously. It's an ethernet cable and it's used to send wi uh, network into devices. But number two, you can send video if you have the right equipment. You can pull audio if you have the right equipment. Um, and you can do control as well. IR, networking, audio, video, all those things um, can be passed through a cat cable. So in a room like this one where you're gonna have speakers in the room and you want the option to play what's on the TV through the speakers, it's always great to run a secondary cat cable or maybe even three if the budget allows it to make sure that you have more and more and more options. That's video, now let's talk audio, come on. All right, let's talk audio. You have two types of audio in a home like this. One, it's gonna be your surround sound, which is dedicated for audio video zones, and you have your home audio, stereo. We'll talk about that next. Surround sound, what does that mean? Directional audio. A surround sound is going to have a center channel that goes right in the middle of your room, 
is going to have a front right and a front left. There's multiple ways to wire them depending on the ultimate look that we're going for the room. If we're trying to keep the walls neat and no actual speakers showing, you wanna wire them to the ceiling so you can do architectural in ceiling speakers. Or if you want to do it more directional to where it's coming from the TV, then you can wire them under the television. Um, you can actually wire three wires here so you can do an LCR soundbar, left, center, right. These are three speakers built into one. If the budget allows it, run them in both ways so you can have multiple options. Surround sound means front and back. So one of the things that you notice is in all the dedicated video rooms, we're gonna run rear speakers, a surround right and a surround left. Here's a quick tip. If you wanna know what's right and left, face the TV, that's how your surround sound is laid out. That is going to give you your highs, but every good surround sound needs a subwoofer. Those are all of your lows. Things to consider in this house. Over here, this one is blank because we actually wired coaxial to give them the option to do a standard box subwoofer. And then we also wired a 16-4 speaker conductor. What does that mean? If you don't want a big box sitting here and you want an in-wall subwoofer, you're gonna need a speaker wire that's gonna run from here to your uh, rack. Uh, you're gonna have an in-wall or in-ceiling subwoofer. And two, you are gonna need a secondary amplifier to power it, but that's one thing that we did here. We wired two different cables to give this client the option to pick what type of subwoofer they put in the room. That's home audio for you. We got a game room upstairs with a 5.1 surround sound, and then the rest of the house, it's covered in speakers. Let's talk stereo and home audio, come on. All right, let's talk stereo. Stereo zones are gonna be for those entertaining rooms, like the patio, the dining room, the kitchen, the office, and those rooms where you just wanna listen to music, like the master bedroom or the master bath. Things to consider. Home audio is going to run in a right and a left, just like your headphones when sometimes you're listening to music, you need a right and a left. Same things for all those rooms. So make sure that you wire two speakers to each of those locations so you can make sure that you have a right and left in each location. If the ceiling is too busy and you need to only wire one speaker, go ahead and run two conductors to that same speaker so you can have a stereo speaker and then again still have a right and left. All right, so imagine you got this amazing smart home with all these speakers and all these TVs and all this cool stuff, but how do you control it? One of the things that you can do is you can run a cat cable to your common rooms. In this household, we happen to run cat cabling to the game room, to the kitchen last living room and master bedroom. These are the rooms where we have the option to put a wall touch panel because we have cat cabling running from here to upstairs and we can use a POE uh, network switch to power it. POE stands for power over ethernet. There's a lot of products that you can actually power with an ethernet cable. So it is good in those rooms to run cat cabling for future use. Now keep in mind, this could be used for multiple reasons, but having them in those most common rooms is gonna give you the option to have control from a wall panel. Now, all of this cabling that we discuss has to go somewhere, right? Normally, all of your data lines go to a specific location. When it comes to the audio and video, you have two separate options. I'm gonna show you one of them because we happen to be in the living room. If you're having a surround sound and you have your home audio, you have the option to wire everything locally. That way your amplifiers and your video is sent from a local room to the TV that's here. However, if you want to keep things neat and out of the way and you have a data closet, wire everything upstairs. Let me show you the one for this house. Come on, let's go upstairs. This is where all of the cabling in the house goes. In here, we have your security panel. Oops, we put that back. In here, we have your security panel. This is what powers your motion sensors, your keypads, your uh, contacts at the door, windows, all of that. This is your security. Call Empire V if you need security. Audio video. This is our structure can for our audio video. What do we have in here? All of the cat cabling for the house. We also have the coaxial for the house. We have the speaker wiring for the house. We have conduit running from here into the attic and then from the attic to the service line. What is the service line? Your internet provider is going to bring the service from their pole 
to your house, your job is to get it from the outside to the inside. So we do have our service line in here as well, which is the cabling that is going from here to the outside of the house, because this is where we're going to put our router, our rack, our amplifiers, our video, everything is going to go in here. We also have conduit between here and here to run all cabling, because what we're actually going to do uh, whenever this client moves in, this is all going to be extended. It's going to be rolled into a rack that's gonna come in here to give us the option to service this rack if anything needs to be added. Extremely, extremely important to put this in the right place. That way, if you need to access it, if you need to service it, if you need to put stuff in it, um, consider spacing, consider lighting, consider power, keep all those things into consideration where pick, when picking um, where you're going to do your structure can. Let me close this up and I got one more thing to show you. Hold tight. All right, so a couple things to keep in mind when pre-wiring a home. One, preparation. Make sure that you have a floor plan and a design of what you're doing. It's a lot easier when you can visualize it. Two, take a lot of pictures. Take pictures of the wiring, the locations. You can never take too many pictures and you'll never know when you're gonna need them. And number three, if you are building a house, call Empire V Services and Installations for your low voltage needs. We're here to help you, help you design it and install it. This beautiful home is a partnership with Empire AV Services and Installations and Lloyd Russell Homes. This one is already on the market, so you can't buy it. But if you do need another one, we got a bunch more coming your way. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to look, listen, and live with Empire AV.